Hello, fabulous friends. Welcome back to The Balancing Act. I'm your host, Jamie, and this is a show where we talk about everything about creating a happy balance, healthy life, as well as creating a roadmap towards your future success. So as you can see on the screen, it's everything about relationships, professional finance, personal growth, recreation, health, environment, and spiritual. And today we're going to talk about time management. Now to me, time management is a buzzword. I like to call it mastering your time. If you missed our previous shows, we talked about getting a starting point, knowing where you're starting so you can create a roadmap towards your future success. You were even given on Tuesday some action items that you could do that you could do something every single day that will make a difference in an area that you rated low low in your balanced life. If you missed those two shows, then definitely click on the playlist down below and check them out. Today we're going to talk about time mastering your time because If you're going to be adding things to your daily schedule, most of us don't have space to add things. Usually when you have to add something to your schedule, you have to say no to something to say yes to that one thing. But today we're going to talk about how you could possibly find more time by managing and mastering your time a little bit more efficiently. And so I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that. And in our membership community over at design your desired future, which I will link up down below. It's a membership community on the Learny app. If you are a member there, it's $5 a month. So if you aren't a member, consider joining. I'll leave the link down below. But on Monday, we're going to start a specific weekly challenge dedicated to helping you honing and mastering your time. You definitely don't want to miss that. So let's get started. So effective time management skills are really essential for achieving our goals, maximizing productivity, and reducing stress. And let me tell you, it definitely helps with reducing stress if you're not feeling overwhelmed. Yet many of us struggle with managing our time efficiently. We often feel overwhelmed. There's too much on our plate with too many tasks and too little time. And in this podcast, we're going to explore some science-backed strategies for effective time management. In the Learny app for the Design Your Desired Future membership community, which I'll link up down below, we're going to do one of these next week as a weekly challenge, just so you can hone in. But I'm going to give you a blanket idea of these different techniques that you can use, and there's going to be 10. So let's get started. Grab out your journey journal, which is a notebook and a pen. If you haven't been with our other podcasts, it's just a notebook and a pen. And take notes. Of course, you can pause at any time, but definitely take some notes and see if there's anything in here that you can use to start sharpening up your time management skills and really kind of finding a way to master the time that you're getting. The real key is getting an ROI and a return on on your investment of your time. So let's get started. Number one, prioritize tasks based on their importance and urgency. Now this is super important and it's something that people oftentimes forget. We can plan our day, we can schedule our day, we can have a whole list of everything we wanna do daily. Um, I wanna do this at nine o'clock, I wanna do this at 10 o'clock, I wanna be doing this at 11 o'clock. We can even leave time in there for space for free time, me time, whatever, but we also need to prioritize. What's the most important thing? You can do this by color coding in your book. You can do this by all kinds of uh, techniques to just prioritize and say, hey, I need to get these three things done today. But prioritizing your tasks is super important and it's one of the things many of us forget. One of the most effective strategies for managing time is to prioritize tasks based off their importance and urgency. This urgency um, in this strategy that I'm going to talk to you today about is called the Eisenhower Matrix. It's named after former... U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who famously said, what is important is seldom urgent, and what is urgent is seldom important. So the Eisenhower matrix is a simple four-quadrant grid that helps us categorize tasks based on their importance and urgency. Now, on your journey journal, if you decide to try this, you're going to want to just open up a page and make a, a square of four four squares on one page, and one will be urgent and important tasks that needs to be done immediately, such as a deadline or a crisis, 
important but not urgent, tasks that are important but do not require immediate action such as planning and strategizing, urgent but not important, tasks that are urgent but do not contribute to our long-term goals such as responding to emails or phone calls, and then not urgent and not important. These are tasks that are neither urgent nor important such as scrolling through social media or watching TV. By using the Eisenhower matrix, we can prioritize tasks and focus on what is important rather than being reactive to the urgent but less important tasks. Number two, the second tip or strategy that we're going to share with you today is to break down tasks into smaller chunks. I've said this many times in other videos. If you've worked with me as a client, you know that. If you've been on my membership community, you know that this is super important. Breaking down tasks into smaller chunks. It's another effective strategy for managing time and is to break down the tasks into smaller, more manageable chunks. This strategy is based on the Zygernarnik effect a psychological principle that states that people remember uncompleted tasks better than completed tasks. By breaking down tasks into smaller chunks, we can feel a sense of progress and accomplishment, which can motivate us to keep going. For example, if you have a project that will take several hours to complete, break it down into smaller tasks that can be completed in 30 to 60 minutes. This will make the project feel less overwhelming and more achievable. So if you choose to use this method, one of the things you can do is in your journey journey journal, write out your daily schedule and mark your tasks by the hour or by the 30 minutes and write them out even by breaking down those tasks. This is going to help you to find or to not feel so overwhelmed It also helps with procrastination because a lot of times if we've got a big task ahead of us, something that's daunting, a lot of times many of us find that we use avoidance techniques to not get that done and then we are struggling to meet that deadline at the very last minute. So breaking down the task into smaller chunks is super effective and super helpful. Number three, the third task that we're going to talk about, the strategy that we're going to talk about is to use the Pomodoro technique. If you know anything about time management, the buzzword, you have heard about the Pomodoro technique. Authors use it, people in in offices use it, leadership use it, productivity techniques. The Pomodoro technique is a time management strategy that involves breaking down work into intervals, typically 25 minutes separated by short breaks. So the technique was developed by Francesco Francesco Cirillo in the late 1980s and is named after the tomato-shaped kitchen timer that he used to time his work um, intervals. So research has shown that the Pomodoro technique can improve productivity and reduce distractions. By working in intervals, we can maintain focus and avoid burnout. The short breaks allow us to recharge and come back to work with a renewed energy. This oftentimes is used for school too. So you complete two lessons and then you take a break and you do something that you enjoy. It's giving yourself a small reward for achieving a task. It is, and research has shown that it has definitely helped to reduce distractions and improve productivity. So number four is avoid multitasking. This one is very interesting. Back when I was in leadership in corporate America, I used to talk about how a, what a great multitasker I was. Basically, what I was telling everybody was, oh, I am a, a jack of all trades, but a master of none. So multitasking is very interesting. Our brain is not wired for to do multiple tasks at one time. So if we are taking and if you if you've got a line of water going straight and then you branch that line of water off into two different directions, less water is going on one dr- to the left side and less water is going on the right side, whereas if you went straight, you'd have the full amount of water. It's the same concept for multitasking. So many people believe that multitasking is an effective way to manage time, but research has shown that it can actually reduce productivity and increase stress. Multitasking involves switching between tasks, which can lead to task switching cost, the time it takes to refocus on a new task. 
fact, studies have shown that multitasking can reduce productivity by up to 40%. Instead of multitasking, focus on one task at a time and give it your full attention. This will allow you to get into the flow. When you get into that flow or that zone, what's happening is your productivity increases immensely because you are focused on that one task and you are really, you, you've got all of your energy going in that direction. You're creating quality work, not quantity. Number five, Use technology to your advantage. So technology can be a double-edged sword when it comes to time management. On one hand, it can be a distraction that takes us away from the important tasks. On the other hand, it can, be, it can also be a very powerful tool for improving productivity. Now, there are many time management apps and tools that can help you manage your time more effectively. You just go into your Google Play app or you go to your Apple Store app and you can find these as well as there's Google Chrome extensions and just multiple apps that you can find both for your computer and your phone. For example, the app Rescue Time tracks how you spend your time on your computer and provides insights on how to optimize your productivity. Forest is an app that encourages you to stay focused by planting a virtual tree that grows as you work. It makes you feel pretty exciting excited when you see that you've created this wonderful tree and you're actually seeing how you how you have grown something out of your work which is kind of a neat concept number six take breaks and practice self-care this is super important and oftentimes forgotten as well so taking breaks and practicing self-care are really crucial for effective time management. Studies have shown that taking breaks can improve productivity, creativity, and overall well-being. Breaks can help us recharge and come back to work with renewed energy. Self-care activities such as exercise, meditation, spending time with loved ones can also help reduce stress and improve overall productivity. Taking care of your physical and mental health is essential for managing time effectively. Number seven is set realistic goals. This is another one that we oftentimes forget. It's so easy to say, yeah, I can do this, or yes, I can do that, and get lost on what you actually have time to do. Uh, I oftentimes like to say, if you are saying yes to something, then you are saying no to something else. So what are you sacrificing? Ask yourself what you're sacrificing to say yes to this project. Setting realistic goals is another important strategy for managing time effectively. When we set unrealistic goals, we may become overwhelmed and stressed, leading to procrastination and reduced productivity. Also, we're saying yes to things that we don't necessarily have time to do. And then we are looking bad because we're not completing those tasks within the time frame, or we are stressed just to get those tasks completed within that time frame. By setting realistic goals, we can avoid burnout and stay motivated. When setting goals, consider factors such as time constraints, available resources, and your own abilities, also your schedule. Break down larger goals into smaller, more achievable milestones to help you stay on track. Number eight is learn to say no. I've talked about this throughout this whole podcast, and that's really an important factor. And it's one of the hardest things many of us find to do is learning to say no. Learning to say no is an important skill for managing time effectively. When we say yes to every request, we may become overcommitted and overwhelmed. When we say yes, we're saying no to something else. This can lead to reduced productivity and increased stress. By learning to say no, we can prioritize our own goals and avoid overcommitment. When saying no, be polite, be respectful, but also firm in your decision. All right, number nine is to manage distractions. I'm sure you've heard this. We kind of talked about the apps that you can use to manage distractions on your phone or your computer earlier in this podcast. But managing all distractions can be really helpful in mastering your time. Distractions can be a major obstacle 
to effective time management. Whether it's social media, email, or other forms of technology, distractions can pull us away from important tasks and reduce productivity. To manage distractions, consider using the tools such as the website blockers or turning off notifications on your phone. Set aside dedicated time for checking your email or social media rather than allowing them to interrupt your work. And I do this often. I will actually, when I was in corporate America, I would say, I'm going to check my email for the first hour in the morning and the last hour of my day. That way, everybody knew I wasn't responding to email until those time frames. And that actually set an expectation and a boundary with everybody that I worked with, which made it a lot less stressful. I wasn't constantly looking at my phone. I could focus in on what I was doing. And voila, you're not multitasking either. So really important to manage those distractions. Find what works for you and make that happen. Number 10 is to reflect and adjust. Now, I talk about this all the time. Here's the deal. When we're doing something and we're trying to make something work, we want to, we try it. If it works, great. We want to reflect on that and then keep going the same way. Maybe make some minor tweaks if it's helpful, but really if it works, then why fix it, right? But if it's not working, we need that time to reflect on why it didn't work so we could change and adapt what didn't work so we can make the appropriate changes. And this is super important. Oftentimes when I work with clients or work with individuals, of course, this is not a a coaching relationship, this podcast. This is for educational purposes. But oftentimes when I work with clients, I have to I have them do a weekly analysis at the end of the week so that they can really learn what worked and what didn't work so they can move forward. In fact, my Smart Wins plan, which is an adaptation from the Smart Goals, actually has a spot in there saying, "What are you doing different this time around when you're doing this program?" So, when you're reaching for this goal, what are you doing differently this week? That means you had to take time to reflect and adjust on what you were actually what you actually did. So, it's important to regularly reflect on your time management strategies and adjust them as needed. What works for one person may not work for another, and our needs and priorities change over time. Reflect on your goals, successes, and challenges and adjust your strategies as needed. And consider seeking feedback from others such as colleagues or mentors to help you identify areas for improvement. So that is a lot of information, and you now have 10 different strategies that you can use for managing your time. Here's another strategy. Join our membership community, which I'll link up down below. It's only $5 a month. But you'll get those weekly challenges, which will help you to make bite-sized changes, that small changes like stepping stone changes that are going to bring you to your bigger overall goals. So we love to see you over there. We love to have you join our community. But here's the deal. Pick what works for you. Now, out of these 10 items in your journey journal, highlight one, circle one, or just pick one on the next page of your journey journal. Write down what you're going to do this week to incorporate steps from what we talked about on that one particular strategy that you picked out of these 10. That's your challenge this week, is pick one strategy out of these 10, put it in your journey journal, and reflect on how you're going to incorporate that into your week to see if you can become a better master of your time and get a better return on your investment. So in conclusion, Effective time management skills are essential for achieving our goals, maximizing productivity and reducing stress, prioritizing tasks, breaking them down into smaller chunks, using time management techniques, avoiding multitasking, taking care of ourselves through self-care. We can manage our time more effectively by setting realistic goals, learning to say no, managing distractions, and regularly reflecting on our strategies We can also continue to improve our time management skills and achieve success. You can do this. This week, pick one. Reflect on how you can make these changes to make it better for your time management. Next week, pick another strategy. Try different strategies. See what works and see what doesn't work. Again, 
Not one thing works for one person as it works for the other person. And do remember that you know yourself best. So you're going to know what you can adapt in a strategy that will make it work better for you. And that's really an important key, especially when you're doing do-it-yourself, self-help, and uh, personal growth. These are very helpful tips. Just remember that you know what's best for you. You know what's going to work for you and adapt the strategies to work for you and find more success in becoming a master of your time as well as finding a more happy, balanced life. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Jamie, with The Balancing Act, and we'll see you next week. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend.